I created 4 simple animations for my low poly character with almost zero experience and today I'll show you how I did it. The 4 animations I created are an idle, a run, a jump up and a fall down animation. I'm still very new to animation but I'll try to explain what I'm doing and one very annoying problem that I ran into. I began by first creating the idle animation and it was more of a warm up before getting into the more complex run cycle. The steps are very simple. I pose the character in pose mode and then I added keyframes at the start and end of the timeline. This keeps the exact same pose for the first and last keyframes and I just have to add one middle keyframe with a different pose. I dragged the playhead to the middle of the timeline and changed the pose a little bit and added keyframes again. And just like that, my girl was finally alive and breathing. I am so proud of her. You know the saying that goes like, before you can walk, you gotta learn to run? That is exactly why I animated the run cycle next. This was something I was quite intimidated by, but the success of the idle animation gave me all the confidence that I needed. I found this great tutorial by Alex on Story on YouTube to create this run animation. This was my first time using the graph editor in Blender and I used it to exaggerate my starting pose a little bit and then later I used it to polish up my animations as well. Uh, I learned using the graph editor from the tutorial and animating this was much easier than I had imagined and I actually had quite a bit of fun doing it. The steps are quite similar to the idle animation. I posed the character to the start of the run cycle then I added keyframes. The pose was one of the first things that I had to nail down for my animation to look good. Once I was happy with the starting pose, I could copy the same pose to the end of the timeline and then mirror it for the middle frame as well. Here's what the animation looked like with just 3 keyframes. It's not the most exciting thing, but I think the vision is clear. Then I began by animating just one leg because I could copy the animation to the other leg quite easily afterwards, which is something I learned from the tutorial. The main idea was to start with one body part, like the legs, and animate it until it looked convincing or good enough, and then move on to the next body part, and repeat the process until I had animated the whole character. From there, I could polish the animation and add finishing touches to it at the end. You may also have noticed that I disabled the kimono, and that's because I wanted to focus on the legs without the clothes getting in the way. I was going to animate the kimono by hand a bit later. Doing it like this makes the whole process feel very approachable and a lot less intimidating. After I was done animating one leg, I copied the animation to the other leg and it was already starting to look pretty good. I really liked how this was turning out. With the legs looking decent, I moved on to the upper body. I simply added some slight rotation and a little bit of drag and with just a little bit of tweaking it already looked quite bouncy and polished. Using the graph editor here really helps to nail down the feel of the animation. The final part of this animation was adjusting the swing of the arm. Uh, just like the body, I only added a tiny bit of drag and tweaked the path of the arm a little bit and it ended up looking quite acceptable in my opinion. Here's what the final animation looked like so far. I only had to animate the swing of one arm because I wanted her other arm to steady her katana. The next part of this animation was the kimono. Initially I wanted to add dynamic physics to the kimono in a game engine, but during testing I could not get it to look right. The physics were kind of messy and I could not get the collisions to work properly either. So I resorted to animating the flow manually myself. Maybe one day I'll get the physics to work properly, but that day isn't upon us yet. I animated this without the assistance of any tutorials, just what I learned earlier. I got a good handle of the graph editor by this point and I used it again to create the dynamic flow during the run. It might look quite tedious and boring, but surprisingly, it was quite intuitive and fun. It was great that I enjoyed this process because I accidentally lost the animation later and I had no choice but to recreate the animation again. You gotta love it when that happens. Anyway, here's what the final animation looked like along with the flowing kimono. The jump and fall animations were super simple. They were just simple static poses with very slight movement as you can see here. So nothing much to talk about there. You may have realized that I haven't animated the flow of the hair the same way I did the kimono and that is because during testing, the hair looked very acceptable in my opinion with the dynamic physics. So I decided to use that instead of manually animating it. 
those were all the animations I needed for now, and this is how she looked inside of Unity, with all the animations set up. Making a game out of this is going to be a challenge for another time, but I did have some experience with making games in the past. In fact, you can watch me make some crappy games right here. 